Hey everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. I know we just saw each other in the last video, which you should, by the way, watch if you haven't. It's pretty good. But today we have some crazy important things to talk about. Prigozhin. Prigozhin has flown his last flight. He face planted from high altitude down to earth thanks to Mr. Putin. And I'm going to continue making jokes and uh, talking shit to, about him because. Let's be honest, Prigozhin was a monster. Prigozhin was a criminal. Prigozhin was a killer. Prigozhin was a person that brought incalculable suffering to a lot of innocent people. He was really one of the worst things humanity had to offer. And the only notable thing was that he was running Wagner Group. The only kind of redeeming thing, if you can call it even redeeming, was that he was running Wagner Group that proven themselves in their fight in Ukraine to be one of the most cost inefficient units in the Russian military. Because what they were doing is they were getting prisoners and then they're getting those prisoners killed. And when the numbers finally came out after they left Ukraine, that it turned out that their casualty range in exchange from what they were capturing was one of the worst of the Russian military period. They were killing so many Russians to get at least one square meter of Ukrainian territory than if it would be a medal hanging out for how many Russians Prigozhin has killed, then he should get one. Unfortunately, now we only give him a medal post-mortem because Prigozhin has been murdered. Um, he was flying his plane because I'm pretty sure you might have seen recently there appeared video with him in Africa. So he was really looking to transition from Belarus activities to maybe some more of a African activities. But it didn't, it didn't happen because Putin is a petty little short man. Because I'm really hoping that this finally will put the end of any kind of discussion whether or not uh, Prigozhin's mutiny was uh, something that was agreed with Putin because it's, it's such a stupid thing on so many levels. But Prigozhin's plane was shut down by firing two S-300 missile systems at it from which we actually have videos. If you go on Twitter and Google Prigozhin's plane, you will see the whole thing, how it falls down. And uh, basically you see him being uh, done for live. Now, what is important to know about this? Firstly, this is obviously Prigozhin dead. He is a very notorious figure. But what is, I think, a lot more important is that with him on the plane was it was another six people and those six people were the heads of whatever was left of Wagner including including Dmitry Utkin which is Wagner himself because something that you might not know is that Wagner group is called Wagner group not because of a uh, musician I mean, it, it, in a sense, it is because of a musician, but it was because of the Dmitry Utkin. Dmitry Utkin is a notorious leader of this uh, semi-criminal organization. I would call it a terrorist organization that was Wagner Group. And Dmitry Utkin is an open Nazi. He completely supports whatever Hitler did. He's an open Nazi. He hates any foreigners. He's a white, na white nationalist. He's a... Uh, everything that you can imagine a Nazi to be, that is Dmitry Utkin. And Dmitry Utkin has a call sign Wagner because Wagner was the favorite uh, musician or compo compo composer of uh, Hitler, obviously. So he was called Wagner and Wagner group was called the group of Wagner, if you translate it directly from Russian. So it was a group of these thugs that belong or answered to Wagner, whereas Wagner being not the musician, but this Dmitry Utkin guy, because of the Nazi heritage, that was how this whole group was built up. This is something for you, for those people that are interested in this. Within this plane crash, the whole leadership of Wagner Group are now gone. There is no leadership of Wagner Group, so whatever any semblance of force the Wagner Group has had, now it's 
we can say it's completely over. There was already kind of last week's discussions about whether or not Wagner Group will or will not stay together because Lukashenko at Belarus has reported that he might have some difficulties paying them for their services because right now they were still, at, at first they were still uh, paid for by the Russian Federation, but after transitioning to Belarus, it, supposedly the agreement was that Lukashenko will be the one paying them. However, Lukashenko obviously doesn't have the resources that uh, Russia has because Russia is getting their resources from the Western countries that are paying for the goods uh, of what Russia is producing. We are still financing this war. We are still financing any kind of terrorist activity. This is something that needs to be said every time. Well, now people on the te Russian Telegram channels are obviously going mad because Prigozhin was somewhat popular back, a little bit back, when uh, he went uh, to conquer Moscow. And to be honest, he could have actually succeeded with that because his effort was not really stopped. They had tanks, whereas Russian forces have sent all of the tanks to the front lines and they had nothing to de defend Moscow with. Unfortunately, Prigozhin decided that he... Uh, uh, is not ready for those kind of extreme steps that potentially he was not completely sure whether or not he wants to challenge Putin's rule, and he folded. Now, that lost him a lot of clout. That lost him a lot of respect. And while there are certain Telegram channels right now calling for removal of Putin, for because it, I think it's for everyone, like I don't even tackle this subject, who killed Prigozhin, because let's be honest, we all absolutely clearly know who did this. We don't need to be very, very investigative about it. And and, and Russians know that as well, who, who did it. The problem is that because Prigozhin lost a lot of clout, now there was very little trust for him. And while there was significant love for him when he went against Putin as a powerful leader, after he submitted to Putin, he, in a Russian perspective, became cuck. He became weak. So while he was still popular in some of the pro-military aspects, and while killing of Prigozhin will not win Putin any points in the Russian military, generally speaking, we should not expect any kind of very serious armed resistance in Russia. In any way, we're going to follow this uh, story development. Right now, there are some threats to Putin and his government, but... Uh, I am pretty sure that we shouldn't expect Russians to do much. So far, they have proven to be quite weak in any kind of threats that they have been making. Additional news that, that made the headlines today was MI-8 helicopter that uh, transferred some airplane parts for the Russian airplanes. And at some point, this Russian helicopter, MIA, decided that it doesn't want to go to the Russian airfields. And instead, it turned to south, to Ukraine, because it was flying north. And then it decided to land in Poltava region in Ukraine. It landed on the airfield, and Russian telegram channels are claiming that, oh, it was an honest mistake, that the pilot just randomly mixed up the maps and then he just saw and and i'm quoting like right now it's so he saw an airfield that was free he landed on their airfield then after looking around he noticed ukrainian flags and ukrainians around him and then he decided to try to take off and then ukrainians uh, opened fire at him killed him and uh, captured the helicopter. Unfortunately for Russians, we both have uh, pictures of the helicopter with no uh, gunshots, as well as we have some additional information from the Ukrainian side. What happened is, is Ukraine have program where Russian troops are able to come to Ukrainian side with some kind of equipment and vehicles. And after surrendering to Ukrainian side with the vehicles, they will get compensated and paying a bounty on that vehicles that they've given. They will also get asylum or even citizenship in one of the European countries, and they will have all things well settled for them. Uh, for for this, this operation, we know for sure, thanks to Ukrainian intelligence, a pilot's family was evacuated from Russia before his attempted escape, 
and after the pilot just came to Ukrainian uh, uh, airstrip, he nicely landed. They shook hands with Ukrainians. Ukrainians got themselves an MIA helicopter full of airplane spare parts that Ukraine is uh, thoroughly la lacking as well. And pilot got, uh, as current sources that I've read, he got somewhere around 500,000 euros, which is quite a hefty amount. All in all, good for him. I'm really hoping that there will be more uh, defectors from the Russian regime and Ukraine will see more things that are good. And talking about things that Ukraine can see, one of the bigger waves that were made recently was Ukrainians destroying the S-400 system in Crimea. S-400s are rare in the Russian military and S-400 in Crimea specifically was very important because that was a centerpiece for the whole Russian defense in Crimea and then it was taken out. The problem was not that S-400 was taken out. I mean, it can happen, you know, stuff, stuff happens, Ukraine could have just hit it. The problem is Ukraine has very good footage of that said incident from a drone. Then there was also an incident recently on the sea where Ukrainian supposedly high-speed boat was destroyed by Russians and Russians released a really bad footage of that boat being supposedly chased by the Russian Air Force, uh, but there was no hit on the Russian, uh, on, on the Ukrainian boat by the Russian Air Force from the Russian video. But then Ukrainians were able to release footage where it was actually in a, a lot better quality was shown that the boat dodged the uh, missile that, that came in and was actually able to retaliate at the Russian um, air asset that they had. So the question was, Ukraine had a couple of incidents recorded on a, on a drone footage, clearly on a drone footage. However, the interface of that drone footage is not something that we've seen before. before. Moreover, interface of that drone footage suggested that potentially Russian air defense systems, radars, were not able to see it because when we saw videos of S-400, it was relatively close. It was definitely within the, the detection and within the, uh, the hitting range. Then if we're talking about the incident with the boat, there was a plane nearby. So if plane would have seen that drone, he would have probably also targeted it. Because the footage is quite clear and good quality, we can definitely say that it's not a small drone. It's not like an FPV drone or anything like that. So there are possibilities that Ukraine has actually developed in now flying some kind of drones that might be like a stealth drones for Russian radar technology, which is really bad news for Russians because that would mean that Ukraine will be able to observe more and more targets on Russian territory. At least that's the assumption. There are a lot of more developments and I will definitely be following the news and if something comes up, I will definitely come out tomorrow with additional video. But thank you so much for watching this today, guys. I love you all. Slava Ukraini. And I'll see you next time.